Hello, hello, Perry Jeffries here, the Entrepreneur CFO, uh, coming to you with our weekly eCFO webinar series. Uh, this month we are tackling uh, financial planning because October is National Financial Planning Month. So we're super excited to get uh, to this next uh, segment here um, from the, 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 the uh, responses we've received. People want to understand more of how to utilize their 401k, which we thought would be an awesome, awesome, awesome place uh, to actually kick this off here. So understanding your 401k, um, let's, let, let's get right in here to it. So before we get into the information, I uh, just want to set a few um, uh, uh, ground rules, if you will. Um, the ground rules are simply this. Get a pen and paper, write down this information, receive a recording of this video. At the end of the presentation, type your questions into the chat section so we can address those questions because we are recording the video. And if you have a question, that means that some other people may have the exact same question. And our goal here is to help educate uh, uh, the people and the masses with respects to uh, building wealth and, and becoming financially free. So let's jump right in here to it here. So let's start off with who am I? Well, if you uh, haven't followed us before, my name is Perry Jeffries entrepreneur CFO. Uh, you can follow me on uh, Facebook uh, at the e.e.cfo, e LinkedIn at Perry Jeffries, Instagram at the e underscore e underscore CFO, YouTube uh, Perry Jeffries, and Twitter at the e underscore e uh, uh, underscore CFO. So who's Perry? Well, I've been in the business of financial services and wealth management for 15 years. I started back in 2003. Um, I've held uh, positions with three Fortune 500 companies. In addition to that, I currently hold a Series 7 license, a Series 66 license, a Life Health and Annuities license, um, as well as some other designations. So if you're not familiar with the Series 7 license, that is a general um, securities license, so i.e. stockbroker. Uh, I can purchase uh, investments, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, uh, REITs, all of those for our clients. Uh, series 66 it is not to be confused with a Series 6, two different licenses. A Series 66 is an investment advisory license, which allows me to function and act as a fiduciary for my clients accounts and offer fee-based uh, uh, financial planning in addition to uh, uh, fee-based investments. Uh, life Health and Annuities license obviously allows me to uh, offer uh, life health and annuities to my clients, insurance, if you will. Have a couple of designations here we're gonna get through super quick. So I have a CRPC, that is a Chartered Retirement Planning Counselor, a designation through the College of Financial Planning. By the College of Financial Planning Standards, uh, I am an expert in retirement planning, and then also to have what's called a CPFA, Certified Pension Fiduciary Advisor uh, designation. Uh, in light of, of the Department of Labor, and the um, uh, acute uh, concern of advisors working with clients and make sure clients' best interests are always taken in mind, um, designated in that particular area as well. In addition to those uh, designations, I also have had the opportunity to work with Damon John uh, from the Shark Tank and founder of FUBU as one of his Rise and Grind ambassadors. And something I'm very fond of here, last but not least, I am a member of the John Maxwell Global Leadership Training and Speaking Team. Uh, understanding that uh, everything rises and falls with leadership, as uh, uh, John says, and uh, uh, anything that we uh, move forward within, whether it's financial planning, coaching, anything along those lines, uh, family, everything rises and falls with leadership. So we thought it was very, very important to pick up this uh, certification and designation as we're uh, looking to lead uh, individuals towards financial freedom. All right, so enough about Perry Jeffries because you didn't get on here to learn all about me, but it's important that you get this uh, information with respects to who the message is coming from. Had a debate uh, or a conversation with some good friends here earlier, and we talked about the difference in opinions, information, and advice. So uh, I have a segment on that, but in short, opinions, everybody has one of them, uh, as the old saying goes, but those opinions are based upon personal experiences, not necessarily uh, based in fact. Information is based upon uh, uh, actual factual information which can be proven. And advice is information provided uh, 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 for prudent future 
execution from someone uh, of authority or an expert in that field. And if you've heard the saying, uh, uh, to be an expert in the field, you need to have 2,000, I'm sorry, 10,000 hours in that, in that industry. So that kind of makes me an expert in this particular field, being I've been in the business for 15 years. So this is not some Yahoo uh, coming to you, telling you, hey, this is this and this is that. This is an expert coming to you to share some information and eventually get to the point where we can hopefully advise you into, into making some good financial decisions. All right, moving forward here. The reason you join is understanding your 401k. So what we're going to cover in this uh, webinar, what is a 401k, history of the 401k, some benefits of the 401k, and features of your 401k. And as we're going through this, um, I know we're discussing 401ks, but this can apply to some of your other investments. So if you work for like a city or a state, maybe you don't have a 401k, maybe you have a deferred compensation plan. This can apply to that as well. Or maybe you have a, a 403B if you're a school teacher uh, and work for a nonprofit. This can apply to that plan as well. Or if you uh, you know work for the government, you have a TSP, a thrift savings plan. This can apply to you as well. So jumping right into it, y'all. What is a 401k? So a 401k is an employer-sponsored plan. Simply put, it's a plan that an employer has to make a conscious decision to offer to their employees. So if you work for a company, they may or may not have a 401k plan. Okay, so not all employers have 401k plans, but if they do choose to have a 401k plan, as soon as you're hired on, you should receive information about how you can participate in that 401k. Now, for my entrepreneurs who are watching this, uh, you, uh, this still applies to you because you can actually establish your own 401k. It's called a single or a solo 401k. So pay attention, even if you're an entrepreneur or thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, because this information will still apply to you. So an employer sponsored plan. Second here, you know, offer it to employees of the company. You have to be an employee of the company to be able to participate in this plan. And some plans or some employers may uh, designate that you need to be a full-time employee before you can participate in the plan. But again, that's information that's shared with you uh, when you're hired on uh, with the company. Second we have here, primary function of the 401k is to fund retirement. So I'm going to spend a little time on this. So fund retirement, what in the world does that mean? So I have this conversation uh, across the country when I'm, I'm speaking to either you know, clients on a one-on-one -on -one basis or I'm going in and, and doing 401k training in offices or speaking around the country uh, uh, to large masses. And I always ask the question, you know, you know what is wealth? And we get different uh, explanation what wealth is or what financial freedom is. And I believe wealth is financial freedom, but I want to make sure we define it. So I measure wealth this way. If you were to stop doing what it is you're doing today, how long would you be to maintain your quality of life? So let that sink in. If you're a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, a school teacher, a janitor, you have a paper route. If you were to stop doing whatever it is that you do today that generates income, how long would you be to maintain your quality of life with the money that you have saved and the residual income that you have coming in? So if you stop working today, would you be able to keep the lights on for 10 years? Would you be able to do it for one year? one month or in some cases i've had people say hey perry i need my direct deposit to hit tomorrow the lights are going off so if that's how we measure wealth that's how we're also too going to measure financial freedom so financial freedom and ultimate retirement is getting to a point where you have enough income coming in to cover your monthly expenses and the 401k is a vehicle it's not the only vehicle but it is a vehicle that can help fund retirement or supplement it okay so now that we've discussed that let's move right on here here history of the 401k so when i was putting this piece together and and, and wondering why is it that so many people don't participate in the 401k it dawned on me the 401k has not been around for that long a time. The 401k was first thought of back in the 1970s and actually started being implemented uh, in 1980s. So it's not an old vehicle. It has not been around for a long time. And if you think about what we learned and, 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 and how we uh, move forward with respects to investing or anything for that matter, we typically learn from our parents. Well, guess what? 
some of our parents or grandparents don't know what a 401k is. So they can't advise you to say, hey, as soon as you start your job, make sure you become, uh, you know, uh, start participating in the 401k. Why? Because they didn't have one. So if they didn't have a 401k, there's no way they can advise their children or their children's children to invest and start investing in the 401k immediately because it hasn't been around for a long time. So keep that in mind. Um, so prior to 1980s, most companies offered pension plans. So it wasn't 401k. It was, hey, you work for a company for 10, 20, 30 years. You know, um, uh, perfect case uh, example here. I'm from Northeast Ohio, the rubber capital world from Akron, Ohio. And from Akron, Ohio, uh, you, uh, you know, we had a ton of factories. We had the Chryslers and the General Motors and the Firestones. And, you know, it was understood that you could go and work for a factory. Uh, you know, Chrysler, uh, uh, example, worked there 20, 30 years. And when you retired, Chrysler paid you a pension. Well, guess what? Companies aren't offering pensions like that anymore, ladies and gentlemen. They have passed responsibility for, your, for you to be able to retire comfortably onto you. That's called privatization. They have started to decrease the number of pensions that are out there and stop offering pension plans and saying, hey, we're not gonna be on the hook for your retirement. You need to be on the hook for your retirement. So just keep that in mind. So a pension is a defined benefit plan. Hey, you work for 30 years, you're gonna get this benefit. You're gonna receive, you know, what is it? 2,000 or 3,000 or 4,000 or $6,000 a month for the rest of your life. That's a defined benefit plan. A 401k is a defined contribution plan, which means, you, you know what I'm saying, you have to contribute to it. That's a huge difference because a lot of times with the pension plans, the employee didn't have to contribute. All they had to do was work and they received a pension. With a 401k, you have to make a conscious effort to contribute to the plan. You have to take that step, okay? Huge difference, but just want to kind of give you a little history on that 401k. A little bit more history here. So, in the early 1970s, a group of hiring individuals from Kodak approached Congress and said, hey, we want to take part of our salaries and we want to invest it in the stock market uh, and be exempt from income taxes. So this resulted in Section 401k for Kodak being inserted in the, the, uh, in the then uh, taxation regulations, right? So the folks from Kodak said, hey, we want to shave off part of our salary. We want to invest it in the stock market and we want it to uh, be exempt from income taxes. So in 1980, uh, a benefits consultant, an attorney by the name of Ted Benner, took note of this, and 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 now we have what we have today is the you no know, prime uh, the tax advantage way to save for retirement or the four hundred one k plan. So keep in mind, read some. We learn a lot from our parents and our grandparents. They didn't have to invest in a four hundred one k because a lot of times they were going to receive some type of pension from the state, the government, the, the company. So this is still fairly new. That's why it's important that you understand about it, understand it. Okay, so, excuse me. So in the benefits, excuse me, so the benefits of the 401k can fund or supplement your retirement income needs, right? So as we stated earlier, what is retirement? Retirement is the point in time, regardless of age, retirement is the point in time where your passive income from investments, from real estate, from a business, your passive investments, monies that you do not have to work for, passive income, my apologies, money that you don't have to work for because things are already in place, is equal to or exceeds your monthly expenses. At that point in time, you have reached retirement. Retirement is not an age. Retirement is not a million dollars in the bank. Retirement is about cash flow. And your 401k can help supplement that. I work with clients now where they've built their 401k up to you know, uh, uh, six uh, high six figures and, and low seven figure uh, uh, retirement plans, 401k balances, if you will. And we use those dollars to pay them a monthly paycheck every month, right? So that's how they supplement their retirement in addition to their social security and pensions and things of that nature. Of the benefit of 401k, put money away tax deferred. So when you put money into your 401k and those dollars grow from one to a thousand to 10,000, a hundred thousand upwards uh, to a million, you do not pay taxes on that growth. That's what tax deferred means. In addition to growing tax deferred, those dollars also reduce your taxable income. So 
Are you one of those people who is like, man, I owe the IRS every year? Did you know that you could reduce your taxable income by, for the year by contributing to your 401k? Let that sink in for a second. Because when you contribute to your 401k, if you're contributing on a pre-tax basis, that means that if you made $1,000 this week and $200 went to your 401k and you received $800, you're only being taxed on the $800, not the full $1,000. So that reduces your taxable income for the year. Well, if your taxable income is reduced for the year, that reduces your taxes. So one way to reduce your taxable income is to increase your contributions to your 401k. Some people don't realize that or don't really use it as a tax mitigation tool. All right, another benefit of the 401k. Free money. Let's talk about free money. Do you like free money? I know I do. So free money. When you have a 401k, you, some 401k, some employers, because again, it's an employer-sponsored plan and it's totally up, to the, totally up to the employer, it's different for each employer, but they may offer you a match. So let's, let's think about this for a second. Let's imagine that you have a piggy bank in front of you. A match works like this. Let's say that I'm matching you on your first 5% of everything that you put into your 401k. So that means you put a dollar, let's say you made um, you know, 100 bucks and you put $5 into the piggy bank, I'm going to put $5 into the piggy bank. So how much money is in the piggy bank? $10. So you put in five. I put in five. It's $10 in there. Your return on your investment is 100%. Where else are you going to get a 100% return on your money? That's free money. And it blows my mind when I see people not taking advantage of this. You want to take advantage of this. If your employer is willing to match you, you want to contribute up to the point where you get that full match. Why? Because that is free money. Never turn down free money. Other features of the 401k, as of 2018, uh, employees can um, uh, uh, defer up to about 18,500. That changes, it's been increasing kind of year over year. Was it 18,000, 17,000? I believe 2018 is 18,500, which means of all of your total income, the uh, uh, ERISA allows you to contribute up to 18,500. That's significant may have a vesting schedule on the employer match. So, you know, though the employer may be matching you, they may have a schedule on there where you're not 100% vested, which means you're not 100% owner of the money they put in. You're always vested in your money, but you may not be vested on the employer match for, you know, one year, two years, five years, kind of just depending on how the 401k is, is, uh, is uh, built. Certain plans may allow you to make traditional and Roth contributions. That's right. So that means in some form of case, you can make a pre-tax as well as a post-tax contribution inside your 401k. So pre-tax means, again, you can re reduce your taxable income. Post-tax means, you know what, it's not going to reduce your taxable income. But when you go to take that money out, out at retirement, it comes out tax-free. Who wouldn't want tax-free income in retirement? Something to think about. Uh, something we do with our clients is we uh, discuss with them the power of zero, how to get to a 0% tax bracket during retirement. Very, very, very powerful. Uh, if, you, if you have any inkling or um, um, suspicion that the taxes are going to be higher uh, 20, 30, 40 years from now, then you want to make sure that you're looking at opportunities where you can get tax-free income. That's a whole nother presentation. Your 401k plan is portable. After you leave your employer, you can roll your plan. You can take your plan with you. If you have a retirement plan, regardless of who your employer is, when you leave, you are eligible to do something with that plan. And that means you can roll it over to, say, another retirement plan with your current employer. You can roll it over to an IRA. If you're an entrepreneur, you can roll it over to a SEP IRA or a solo 401k. And you can do all of these things and avoid paying a 10% penalty and ordinary income tax on those dollars. So again, this is where you want to have a financial advisor working with you so you can receive advice. I've seen people lose thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars based upon using the opinions of others and giving them and, uh, the opinions of others and also to uh, uh, receiving bad information. Do not make financial decisions based on opinions 
or just simply information. You want to receive advice based upon your particular need. Money. So the money is taxed as ordinary income after age 59 and a half. So let's say, you know, you've invested in your 401k, you are 60 years old, you're ready to, you know, take your foot off the gas and enjoy the good life and travel around the world and what have you, and, and just enjoy retirement. Well, then uh, when that money comes out of your retirement account, out of your 401k, it is going to be taxed at ordinary income if you put the money in pre-tax. Because remember, when you put the money in previously pre-tax, it reduced your taxes. Well, the IRS isn't giving you a pass on the taxes. It was tax deferred, which means you're still going to owe ordinary income taxes on that. So that's something that you want to consider. So if you have 100000 in your 401k and you take out 5000 you owe taxes on 5000 So you may only net 4000 Something to consider as you're planning for retirement. Because if, if, as we said earlier, retirement is all about cash flow. Other features of the 401k allows for money to be dispersed for qualified hardships. So why not take advantage of the 401k? Don't not put money in your 401k because you're like, oh, well, I got to save for college or I want to buy a home. The 401k allows you to take money out for that, people. So you can take out money without penalty to cover it, college tuition, purchase a home, to avoid foreclosure or evictions. You're still going to owe taxes, but you're not going to owe the penalty. Because guess what? We can't avoid taxes. We can mitigate them and reduce them, but we're not going to be able to avoid them. But you can access those dollars uh, uh, penalty free for that. So don't not invest in the 401k because, oh, I got to save money for it because I want to buy a home. No, still put money into the 401k because you can take money out to help purchase the home. All right. Here's a feature here that, you know, depending on who you speak to, they're going to have some debate. People will have debates about it, but you can actually borrow up to 50% of your 401k. So if you're working for your employer or you have your own 401k because you're self-employed and you work with an advisor like me who gave you good advice on what type of retirement plans to have, well, you can actually borrow up to 50% of the value of your account up to a max of 50000 So if you have 10000 in your 401k, you can borrow 5000 you have 100,000 in your 401k, you can borrow 50. If you have 200,000 in your 401k, you can borrow 50. So that's what it means. You can borrow up to 50% of the plan up to 50,000. What's nice about this is that there's no taxes, there's no penalties. I repeat, there's no taxes, there's no penalties, which means you can take this money out without paying taxes and penalties. And for this to be considered a loan, it's going to have an interest payment a principal and an interest part of your payment. Well, typically that interest payment is paid back into your account. So guess what? You just became your own bank. You just can't became the uh, bank of you. And that means so, and you know, depending on the advice you talk to, no, some advisors say never borrow from your 401k. Well, if you're receiving advice, this is an opportunity for you to look at your finances. And if it makes sense, if it makes sense to pay off a debt that you're paying 20% on, and not having any deductions on that to, to be able to borrow from yourself at, you know, four or five, 6%, depending on where prime rate is. And those monies go back into your account and that frees up, you know, hundreds of dollars a month and interest payments that you would just throw out the window. That may make sense. But again, that's why you receive advice. I'm providing information today, but that's why you get advice based upon your specific needs. Okay. And typically with your 401ks, you can invest in stocks. Some 401ks allow you to invest in stocks. Other ones are just mutual funds and ETFs or index funds. But you have an opportunity to grow your money. So don't have a 401k and sit in cash, right? If the goal is to grow the money, then you want to have those dollars invested. But you want to have them invested based upon your risk tolerance, not the risk tolerance of the person who sits next to you at the job. What they're doing with their 401k is not what you should be doing with your 401k. What you should be doing with your 401k is based upon what your financial goals are. So if you need, if you have 30 years to retire, you're going to be invested differently than a person who has two years to retire. So that's why you get advice. And advice comes from someone of authority with experience of 10,000 plus hours in that particular industry, not your coworker. I see this happen all the time that people are investing their dollars based on what the coworker told them to do. And not saying that the coworker doesn't know what they're talking about, but again, is that advice based upon your specific need. They may tell you what's working well for them, but that necessarily means that's what's gonna work well for you. That's why you get advice, okay? 
Take advantage of your 401k people. Your 401k may be your primary source of retirement. I have clients who, uh, again, have uh, 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 six figures in their retirement, and this is, you know, their primary source of income, or it could supplement your income. But nonetheless, you need to have that nest egg. Another advantage here. So I uh, can always move to another 401k or an IRA without penalty. People, 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 hear me when I say this. Stop cashing out of your retirement plan without speaking to a financial advisor. When you do that, when you cash out and receive the money in hand in your bank account, that is a distribu early distribution. When you do that, you pay penalties if you're under 59 and a half. You pay a 10% early withdrawal penalty and you pay owe taxes. And just because your employer withheld 20% doesn't mean that you may not owe more. So you may effectively end up owing 40% on that money. So if I gave you a dollar and I gave you a dollar and I said, hey, go ahead and just throw <clears throat> 40, 40 cents of that dollar to win, that's what you do when you throw when you take a distribution of your 401k plan. Get advice. There's ways you can move your plan and pay off your debt and 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 access those funds for whatever need without having to pay taxes and penalties. Okay. That's all I had on that. You need to know how much money you would need in your 401k so that you can retire. So I hear this all the time. Oh, pair, I'm investing in my 401k. Well, that's great. How much are you investing in your 401k? How does that align with your goals? Don't just invest blindly. Invest with a purpose. Be intentional with your actions. And to do that, you have to think about the end in mind. If you think about the end goal, then you can always reverse engineer into that goal. Here's a rule of thumb that I use here. So the 3.5, 3.5% rule. You take your annual income, you divide that by 3.5%, that's gonna equal your nest egg. Example, let's say that you need your 401k to generate $30,000 a year of income for you. Will you take that number, divide it by 3.5%, and it tells us that your 401k needs to be about $857,000 for it to generate a consistent 30%. And you may say, Perry, well, I've heard other advisors say that you can take out four or five, six percent out of your plan. That's absolutely correct. That's typical financial planning rule of thumb. But I use three and a half percent. You know why? What if those dollars were pre-tax dollars and when they come out, you have to pay ordinary income? That's going to at least shave off probably 30 percent for federal and state. So I like to use this number at three and a half percent. I rather if you have too much money in your account versus not enough and run the risk of running, run, run the risk of running out of money. <clears throat> Okay, group, and kind of just ending here, um, for you to really maximize your 401k plan, I highly recommend that you get a financial plan from a qualified financial advisor. Not your coworker, not your mom, not your uncle who retired. Get a plan from a qualified financial advisor, someone who's gonna give you unbiased advice. And they may give you advice, and you may have to pay for the advice. But you paying for that advice may actually make you hundreds of thousands of dollars paying for it on the front end, okay? Start planning your financial freedom today. If you would like a free copy of our financial planning video that we actually use with our clients, go to uh, www.perryjeffries.com forward slash private planning video forward slash. Make sure you get that last forward slash. Whatever reason doesn't work unless it has it other, that last forward slash. But again, that's www.perryjeffries.com private planning video forward slash. And we will send you a free copy of our financial planning video in addition to our financial health checklist. Know where you are so you can know where you're going. And that is it, everybody. Again, thank you for uh, watching this webinar. Hope it was beneficial toward you, uh, to you. Again, my name is Perry Jeffries, the Entrepreneur CFO, uh, President of Diamond Equity Advisors. Um, and if you'd like to schedule just a complimentary appointment with us, just to ask some questions uh, based upon your uh, specific needs, please feel free to. You can go to www.mycfo.as.me, get access to my calendar, schedule an appointment, and we look forward to helping you, uh, one, gain peace of mind, and two, become financially free. God bless. Have a great day.